All right. Acts 15. I'm not going to read every word because we, we're getting close on time. We've got in two different places here, we've got um, traditional Jewish positions on circumcision. Unless you're circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you can't be saved. Right? That's the opening of this. And then further down, it's necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the law of Moses. Between those two things, those are components within uh, the church uh, in Antioch in the first case and the church in Jerusalem in the second case. Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension, verse 2, with, and debate with them. And some of the others uh, were, dis were appointed to go up to Jerusalem. Paul, Barnabas, the, some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem. Right. So we've got... A, a dissenting voice against the requirement of circumcision and the ceremonial law of Moses in Paul and Barnabas, and it will end up having Simon Peter in that group also. They are meeting in Jerusalem with the circumcision party, or um, in one place they're called uh, former Pharisees, down in, in verse 5 of, of chapter 15. So they gather, and their main question is how Jewish does a convert from, from the Gentile world need to be? Now, let's set the table here. Hebrew scripture never has a moment in which it calls into question the covenant of Genesis 17, namely God telling Abraham, from now on, as a part of our covenant with one another, Every male from every Jewish household needs to be circumcised. That is a sign of the covenant. It is a given throughout all of Hebrew scriptures. Never even raised as a question. Pardon me, folks. Uh, COVID uh, diagnosis on Monday, and it's taken its toll on my voice. Um, here's, here's Peter standing up among them in that back and forth between Paul and Barnabas and the circumcision party as it's appeared twice. Brothers, you know that in the early days, God made a choice among you that by the mouth, uh, by my mouth, the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Remember, that's the story of Cornelius. And God who knows by knows the heart bore witness to them <laughs> by giving, <clears throat> sorry, by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, having cleansed their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. Now, let's put that in context. We've seen in an earlier story in Acts, in the Cornelius story, we've seen that the the men and women who were receiving Peter's message in Cornelius's house just got holy spirited before Peter or anybody could do anything about it. That is, in the words of Paul and Barnabas and Peter, it must be, you know, they the Holy Spirit came upon them visibly before we could even get a chance to circumcise them. And they took that as a sign of God's welcome, of God's uh validation of belonging, which happened before circumcision. Right? So you've got one side arguing black letter law that is undisputed in the Hebrew scriptures, and you've got another side that's arguing fully on the basis of experience. So let's see how it goes. All the assembly fell silent. They listened to Barnabas and Paul as they related what signs and wonders God had done through and through them among the Gentiles, and then it gets handed off. Doesn't Jim, James here look like the kind of guy you would expect to be making big decisions? After they finished speaking, <laughs> James replied, brothers, listen to me. And this is, by the way, is G James, the brother of Jesus, James of Jerusalem. Uh, James, the apostle, John's brother, uh, will die in the course of this stretch of the book of Acts. Um, but James of Jerusalem is Jesus's brother. Simeon, which is a curious thing, he probably means Peter, 
uh, Simon, but it comes out Simeon in, in, in the manuscripts we most, tr most trust. Brothers, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first visited, visited the Gentiles to take from them a people for his name. And it, with, this, uh, with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. Then he goes to the prophet Isaiah. After this, I will return. I will build the tent of David that has fallen. I will build its ruins and I will restore it that the remnant of mankind may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who makes these things known from of old. So James here quotes scripture to come in behind the party that is not for circumcision. But the scripture doesn't have anything to do with circumcision. It just has to do with the mind and heart of God. Therefore, my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, but should write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols, from sexual morality, and from what's been strangled and from blood. For from ancient generations, Moses has had in every city those who proclaim him, for he has read every Sabbath in the synagogue. How do you explain this last paragraph? Well, it's not an undisciplined inclusion. There are things that will be insisted on for the identity of the early Christian community and the ethical boundaries of the early Christian community. When we get to chapter 5 of 1 Corinthians, for instance, Paul is going to say, I hear that there is uh, immorality among you that not even the Gentiles usually have. A man is sleeping with his father's wife, and you aren't even embarrassed about it. Right, that is going to be Paul's version of this line of of in, of uh, sort of demanding of Gentiles that they develop a new sense of what is moral sexually. That was a big difference between Judaism and and Gentile world. The sexual mores were a huge difference. Um, almost everything went among Gentiles. Uh, as you know, Jews had had relatively certainly relatively strict laws about mono, uh, monogamy and about sexual uh, ethics that look very different than Gentiles. So here, James is saying, there will be a difference between their old self and their new self, but it won't be that they are newly circumcised. There are things that will govern and discipline the lives of these people who are welcome. Because there are things that are important about being a, a follower of the way. There are, there are ways to behave that matter. But we aren't going to put a burden on them of circumcision and kosher and ceremonial law. That that's, seems to be what James is doing. And I will, I will kind of sum it up by saying he brings scripture and experience together in his verdict and comes down on the side of Paul and Barnabas and Peter, but with a nod to the discipline of the Pharisees and, and the Pharisee Christians and the circumcision party in uh, Christian ethics. So it's not that he cuts the baby in half like wise Solomon, but he does merge the two authority structures, the, the authority of Bible and the authority of experience. 